Hi creators, Dirk here. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today I want to make a comparison between the Sony a6700 and the Sony a7C Mark II. This is not a sponsored video. I own both cameras. I purchased them with my own money. So I won't read specs from data sheets. Today I want to give you a hands-on comparison on features and design flaws <laughs> that I found while working with both cameras. And at the end of this video, I'm going to reveal which of the two I'm going to keep and which one I'm going to sell. To help you determine which of the two cameras is best suited for your needs, I will give points for each category in which one camera outshines the other one. Let's start with the most obvious, the price. The Sony a6700 currently retails at $1,398. Whew, thank God it's not $1,400. The Sony a7C Mark II currently retails at $2,198. That is an $800 difference and a clear point for the Sony a6700. Surprisingly, the bodies are extremely similar in size and weight, and the weight difference is so minimal that I don't give points for either or. The first key difference for me was the grip. On the Sony a6700, the center of the sensor is a little bit shifted to the left compared to the a7C Mark II, and that leaves more room for your fingers. Also, the grip itself is a little bit more bulged to the outside, it fits so much better in my hand compared to the grip of the Sony a7C Mark II. Ergonomically, I have to give the point to the Sony a6700. Because the sensor is a little bit more shifted to the left side, it is closer to your eyepiece. And when I want to use my Rode Wireless Go 2 system and attach it to the cold shoe mount, well, it's not a problem here on my Sony a7C Mark II. It fits right on. But here, on the a6700, the eyepiece is actually blocking everything that I want to attach, unless it's super slim. Only after removing the eye cap you can attach this, and to me this is a disadvantage and therefore practical point for the Sony a7C Mark II. On both cameras we get the same viewfinder. The fully articulated display is almost the same. Well, the Sony a7C Mark II has 3600 dots more, but quite honestly, you won't even notice the difference. The layout of the buttons is slightly different and the Sony a6700 offers one more customizable button compared to the a7C Mark II. Point for the Sony a6700. The still movie and s &Q dials are very different. The layout is different and strangely also the rotation is different. It's confusing, especially when you want to keep working with both cameras but it's not enough to give a point for either of those cameras. Mode dial and rear dial sit a little bit different. This is something you easily get used to and not enough to assign a point for this category. The left side of both cameras is totally identical. We get a microphone jack, the USB Type-C terminal, a memory card slot, the HDMI micro jack and a headphone jack. And now I'd like to talk about something that seems to be a very small thing, but to me as a creator, it's a major deal breaker. We're talking about the hooks for the shoulder strap. While here on the body of the Sony a7C Mark II, they are very firm. See that? On the Sony a6700, they're flapping around, they're rattling, they're shaking, and they're making a constant noise. Even if you have the shoulder strap attached, if there's a little bit of a windy situation, you get this noise. And that's annoying and that's disturbing and especially when you're out and about running and gunning with your camera, this is very distracting. And this is something... Hi Kiwi! <laughs> no? uh, this is something you don't want. So the solution is to take off those hooks, but that means also it takes much longer when you want to actually attach the shoulder strap again. It may look like a minor issue to you. To me, it's a big plus for the Sony a7C Mark II. Bottoms of both cameras are identical and we're also using the same type of battery. The in-body stabilization of the Sony a6700 offers you up to five stops of shake compensation, whereas the Sony a7C Mark II offers you seven stops of shake compensation. Clear point for the Sony a7C Mark II. 
we do get the exact same amazing autofocus in both cameras. No point for either of those. And now let's talk about something very obvious. We do have a 33 megapixel full frame sensor built in the Sony 7C Mark II and a 26 megapixel APS-C sensor built in the Sony A6700. Although the full frame sensor requires much larger lenses, heavier lenses with more glass and lenses that are more expensive, I still prefer the nicer out of focus background I can accomplish with the full frame sensor, the nicer bokeh and the overall better image quality. To me, it's a point for the Sony A7C Mark II. And I still can use all the APS-C lenses that I can use on the Sony A6700. All I have to do is to set the A7C Mark II in the Super 35 mode and that would crop in on the sensor. It would give me a 17 megapixel image and quite honestly, 17 megapixel is still more than enough for the most of us unless you really need gigantic prints. The regular ISO range on the Sony A6700 goes up to 32,000 and we can even extend it up to 102,400. The ISO on the Sony A7C Mark II goes up to 51,200 and we can extend it up to 204,000. I personally don't like to shoot with high ISO, but if you need that range, then the Sony A7C Mark II might be the better choice point for this camera. I truly appreciate that the Sony A6700 offers in 4K mode 120 FPS. If you want to create B-roll footage, this can be very helpful. The more I was surprised and disappointed that the $800 more expensive Sony A7C Mark II offers maximum 60 FPS in 4K mode. And even this is a 1.5 times crop. That's a little bit of a letdown. The elephant in the room, the overheating issue. After purchasing the Sony A6700, I was so disappointed finding out that in 4K mode you have very short recording times due to overheating. I made a dedicated video on this. You will find the link for this video up here. And to me, this is an absolute deal breaker. Now, the Sony A7C Mark II gives us better recording times in 4K. However, it's not perfect, but for my needs, it is more than sufficient and I can record and shoot everything without any issues. If you are a wedding videographer, if you are a professional filmmaker, if you need to record for hours and hours, then none of those cameras is for you. Now the points. We gave four points to the Sony A6700 and six points to the Sony A7C Mark II. I know I didn't go into all the details, but these were categories and features that were important to me. When the Sony A6700 came out in July 2023, for me as a hybrid shooter, I thought it was the perfect camera and I was really excited. All the specs on paper, they were just amazing. And I was very, very disappointed when I learned about the overheating issues and also some other design flaws. I purchased this one in combination with the amazing 18 to 135 mm as a travel combo because I planned a trip to Europe and now I'm not so sure anymore. Knowing all the issues from the Sony A6700 and knowing that these cameras are so similar in body size and weight, it was a very smart marketing move from Sony to wait a couple of months before announcing the Sony A7C Mark II. The Sony A7C Mark II allows me to attach all kinds of lenses, even APS-C lenses. It gives me better recording times. It gives me a better stabilization and overall the better image quality. And this is the reason why I'm going to sell my Sony A6700 and I'm going to keep the Sony A7C Mark II. Don't get me wrong. The Sony A6700 is an amazing camera. And I know it's going to make a lot of you as hybrid shooters super happy if you don't have to record 4K 60 or higher for a very long time. And this was my practical hands-on comparison of the Sony A6700 and the Sony A7C Mark II. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll definitely respond. Oh, and a free way to support my channel would be to leave a like. And if you like my channel overall, please hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. Till the next time. Stay safe, stay tuned and take care. Bye for now.